Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I'm your host, and on today's how-to, we're gonna show you how to set up a hydraulic sequencing circuit to make sure that the horizontal cylinder extends first and then deadheads before the vertical cylinder. Helping us out from Motion Industries is Ron Ellis, and he's representing Eaton Vickers today. And Ron, thanks so much for being on the program. Thank you. We have got quite an elaborate demonstration going on right here. What are we gonna to see today? We've got our Eaton Vickers training panel that we use to demonstrate steps necessary to effectively set up a hydraulic sequencing circuit. Okay, can you give me a little background on this first? Sure, a hydraulic sequence valve is one that senses a pressure and then allows an actuator to move. So basically, the sequence valve will sense pressure from one actuator and then cause another one to move. That's exactly right. All right, give me an example of an application that you would use a sequence valve. Probably in the machine tool industry with where you see most of these, uh, they have an application where they need to cl clamp a part in place and then maybe drill a hole in that part. So clamp and drill, clamp and press, clamp and bend, all those kinds of applications. Okay, and you have a cutaway example right here of something that we would typically see, is that yes, correct? Yes, th this is a sequence valve, and there are several ports in the sequence valve that we kind of need to look at. The first port right here is, is the inlet port, and we're gonna connect this basically to the back end of our clamp cylinder. When the clamp cylinder deadheads, the pressure is going to go up. When the pressure goes up, then the oil will go through the second port after the sequence valve opens and allow the secondary event, which in our case would be our drill. All right, well let's get started, but first I gotta put on my PPE, right? Exactly. Okay, you've got yours on. Always wear your personal protective equipment for whatever the job calls for. Are we ready to go? Absolutely. All right, I'm gonna be your assistant. You tell me what to do. Let's crank this okay. thing up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna connect our pressure and return manifold to our directional valve and then the directional valve to our cylinder. Okay. okay. So let's the, first, do it. the first thing we're gonna do is connect pressure on the manifold to the P port on the directional valve. All right, so Let's where's that going to be? on the bottom be? left here. And now we're going to go tank on your All side. Right, tank, got it. And I'm going to go to the return, which is the same as the tank over here. All right. And now we need to connect the A and B port to the, the cylinder. All right. So let's go ahead and take a hose, and you go from the A port. Got it. Locked we'll in. Into the back end of this cylinder. Okay. Hey, Ron, I notice each time we connect the hose, we hear a click. That's important, right? That click is your friend. It makes it sure that we have a connection where the fluid can flow through, but it also makes sure the connection doesn't come loose and you get wet. We don't want to do that. The B port. All right. I got a B port right here. And I'm going to go ahead and take it around here and All connect right. it to the rod end of our cylinder. So now we've got the clamp cylinder taken care of. All right. What happens next now? We're ready to operate the clamp cylinder, yes. Okay. So go ahead and hit the start button. All right. And grab the directional valve, and let's make sure this works. So we're good to go. We saw the extent of the horizontal cylinder. All right, we'll pull that back. But we've still got to get that vertical cylinder to move, right? Exactly. Now we need to put the sequence valve into the mix. Let's do and that. So we're going to go to... The same ports you hook to the back end of our clamp cylinder needs to go to the inlet. Got it. And now we go, we've got that to the inlet. And now we need to take the outlet of the sequence valve, which is up here, okay. to the bottom end of this cylinder. Sorry. All right, so we're going to the out. Mm -hmm. Got it. Now I'm going to the, the back end of our drill cylinder. All right. And we need to go ahead and hook up a drain line on the sequence valve, okay, which is the one that's labeled DR. That's down here at the bottom, right? Okay, you do that. That's fine. Go ahead. Okay, and I'll take I'll take care of the valve. Got it. Now we've got the drain connected, and there's one more hose from the right end of the cylinder back over to our directional valve. All right. So we're we going to B or A? Let's see. Whichever one we've got going to the right end of our clamp. Okay, that's B. So B. I'm going to be going to B. All right. And now we have it connected. Are we ready to go? It looks good to me. All right, let's turn it on. I don't see any leaks anywhere. Is that a good sign? That's wonderful. Here we go. All right, there goes the horizontal cylinder. That's what we wanted, right? That's exactly right. We clamp the part, and then we extend the cylinder to drill the part. Once that dead headed, then that came up. So we're good there. And it looks like it's working correctly, yes. 
Sounds good. Well, Ron, thanks so much. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Ron Ellis with Motion Industries representing Eaton Vickers. Well, if you have any questions about anything you saw today, please contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location. Hopefully, this helped you with your practical application. And as always, we wore our PPE, personal protective equipment. Make sure you always wear yours for whatever the job calls for. And also, look for other how-to videos with me, Tom Clark, as your host. Thanks so much for watching today.